Hello everyone and welcome back again. Now in this lesson we're gonna start building up our Hello World app and uh, and uh, just again to point you out to the to the ID which we're gonna be using. So we are gonna uh, we are gonna be working with um, Android Studio and this is where once you click on this link you will download Android Studio and once you download it, install it, of course you're gonna have to install JDK first uh, JDK. Once it's being once it's installed, then you can actually uh, download Android Studio, and then once you install Android Studio, uh, you will get Android Studio up and running in front of you, and you will get the you're gonna be greeted with a screen that looks somewhat like this. Now, since I've instantiated some projects before, so that's why I get um, I get this recent projects uh, list over here. Also. Uh, you would notice that probably, probably by the time when you install your uh, IDE, you will find out that my uh, IDE is having the darker theme, which is quite popular among uh, people showing on YouTube, for example, some of the tutorials of Android or um, tech blogs, for example. So if you are, if you like the dark themes of uh, uh, in IDEs in general, you can go ahead and configure, and then you go to settings. And uh, let me resize this a bit. And in the appearance, you will get, uh, once it loads, actually, you will get here the theme, which says Darkula. Of course, um, I think by default is the IntelliJ. Uh, but uh, I picked up Darkula once, once you uh, once you apply that theme, you're gonna have to restart uh, your IDE, and then you're gonna get the fully kind of dark theme there. Um, also, once you actually start up your project, you will find out that um, your project will be. Um, I mean, once you, for example, like okay, we started Android Studio, created a new project, and then when you close Android Studio and relaunch it again, uh, you will start up right away with the um, with the latest project that you had. So I think uh, I think there's an option for that, which is called like. Uh, uh, let me see here. Let me start up. Uh, project. I think it's somewhere in the editor options. There you go. You see, reopen last project on startup. And right here, I just simply uncheck that option. So and confirm upon a uh, confirm application exit. So before I exit, the application asks me. So uh, this is um, this is why I just simply uncheck that option as well. So it always greets me with this dialog in case I wanted to older, uh, to open an older project or or I would like to create a new project every time. Now, once again, once you had Android Studio up and running like this, please don't forget to press the button check for updates. So once you click on the button check for updates, you will get this update info and of course I mean currently my release is uh, by the time of this recording 0.5.1 uh, which is uh, updated to the latest version. Uh, if you run Android Studio as an administrator and you have to run it as an administrator so you could go to the SDK manager and um, give a second here now it will show you all the SDKs that has been uh, uh, installed on your machine and whatever needs the update. So for example, in my case right now, uh, for the samples update for the SDK needs an update here, uh, and this is it. So I have only one package here. All right. Now, of course, you can feel free to install any SDK. So currently, I have only, I think, uh, OK, the developer tools and everything, and I have the uh, uh, the Android SDK for KitKat um, and uh, and Jelly Beans right there and Jelly Beans apparently the 4.2.2 not the 4.3. But so anyway, we're gonna we're gonna be working with uh, with KitKat for now, so we're gonna be always targeting the latest greatest. Now I'm not gonna actually do any updates, so I will not. I don't wanna uh, actually run into. Maybe I could break something there, so I don't wanna run any updates right now. I will run it probably later on. Um, all right. So once you have installed, uh, once you have installed Android Studio, you run the SDK Manager. You updated everything. So once you click on the SDK Manager, you will find some files to install and update. You update that, 
and once the update is done restart Android Studio again and then we can go ahead and start a new project now uh, in during our discourse we're gonna be developing um, an application a simple application uh, to uh, as, as like an, uh, a mobile application for our student service uh, so for example you are uh, uh, student.fit.ba uh, is the portal on your web page where you can actually on the web page where you can actually start checking in the announcements, downloading materials, and so on and so forth. We're gonna be start. We're gonna be trying to make an application that is um, that is more like a mobile version for that for the Android phone. So you can instead of going to the website every time, you have the application which you can download from the Google Play uh, Google Play Store, and then you can access uh, these certain services. All right, and we're gonna of course start adding features and so on. So uh, maybe hopefully someone will take over once we finish this demo, and we could uh, polish it even more, and it could be actually used for real. So okay, so let's um, let's get started. So here I'm gonna call this the DLMS client. Okay, I will leave this as it is for now. And uh, usually the package name is quite famous among Java people that, that or among Java programmers that you write the reverse domain name. So I'm going to call this ba.fit.dlmsclient.app and I'll leave it that way. And this is the project location, so users, username, which is Mohammed in my case on my PC, Android Studio project, uh, projects, and, uh, and then the folder. Now the minimum SDK is Proyo. Now I don't want to target the very very oldest kind of um, API over here. I will actually target a little bit newer. Uh, I mean at least the minimum one. How far back I would like to go. And uh, apparently since I have only Jelly Beans 4.2.2 installed, I will just keep it there. Uh, the target SDK I'm gonna always always target the latest greatest that's what you should do always target the latest greatest and then the minimum is how far you would like to go back now how far you would like to go back is of course uh, you have to check out your dashboard as we already talked about in the last video and uh, and you can choose it um, and of course make sure when you are choosing the minimum SDK make sure that you have already that SDK installed as well so in, just in case you, if you run into any kind of problems and the theme, I will leave it as it is by default, holo light with dark action bar. So I'm going to hit next. Now it, I'm, I would like to get a blank activity. So I'm going to hit next. And uh, the main, uh, the activity name. Now for the first, the first screen which the user is going to get is the authentication uh, page or the authentication activity. So I'm going to call this um, uh, login activity. Right. I'm going to call it like capital L, capital A. And it's going to, the layout name is going to be activity underscore login, which I'm quite happy with the name. And I'm not going to add any features like fragments and, or action bars or whatever. I'm, I'm actually going to leave everything as it is by default just for now. And then if we needed anything, we're going to just simply start adding upon it. All right, so let's hit finish. And right now we will be waiting uh, for the... Gradle, uh, which is a build building system, uh, to finish building our application. Now, of course, my window actually went way, way far. Uh, let me hit close here. And we just fit this into the recording area. All right. So let me push this right there. Okay, so the first thing we get is the is as you can see here our uh, our IDE which we get the project side, we get as well the Gradle uh, Gradle Tasks Manager over here. Now, if you open the pane uh, by clicking on it, it directly, I think it will close it. If you hold the Alt key, you will hide it, right? And um, let's take a moment and look at our application structure here for a bit. So the first thing here is uh, uh, you have to know about is the, that the Android Studio is built, is built upon or is based on the IntelliJ um, IDE 
which is an alternative uh, de Java development environment for um, like like Eclipse and NetBeans, and uh, it's actually built upon the Community Free uh, Edition. Okay, now uh, if you look here, you have this dot idea uh, folder. With the dot idea folder is the uh, is the folder where uh, the basic metadata of your project that that uh, is needed by the IntelliJ to keep track of your project files and everything. So this is where the idea project is, uh, what the idea folder is containing. Okay. The app is containing your app folder, where you have your uh, the build, where your built resources and everything. I mean, if once you build your application, the build uh, stuff is there. Uh, the libs is where your external, li where your libraries, which are using, is there, uh, are there actually. Uh, the source, where you have the your source files, so your mm, your classes and everything, your packages will be actually right here. You have your resources where you have the, uh, for example, the drawables and layouts, menus, values, and you can have even more and more folders which we could add later on. And the Android manifest, which is a very important XML file which uh, describes here uh, what kind of permissions you need to add to your application if you would like to make a, the application target different SDK. What is going to be the launching activity? What are the activity? Uh, uh, what are the intent filters and all these stuff? We're going to get into that uh, later on during our developing during develop during our the the course um, throughout this course while developing this application. We're going to get through many many of these things, many of these keywords which I was uh, mentioning right now. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We have our uh, Gradle uh, build, for example, files which was describing what are building tools I'm using, uh, what is the SDK version I'm targeting, and everything. Uh, and I will talk in a second what a, what is a build system is uh, in a minute here. And here is the Gradle um, uh, uh, libraries which is needed for the Gradle system to work, so it can actually build your system. Now, what is this? Gradle anyway. What is a building system? Now, if you are working in a in a larger environment, in 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 uh, in a production environment where you have uh, like five or six or ten people are working on the same project, and you have and, and the project got really large, and you have databases, and you have a lot of dependencies with files, libraries, resources, icons, pictures, and so on and so forth. Now, once the project gets to that size, and once you are actually working on your developing machine, development machine, your development machine has a lot of links to different files in different locations. Now, once a guy, once another person actually joins your team, you have to deploy your project in that uh, 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 in that new person's your new team member's uh, computer and or machine in order to. Uh, in order for him or her to start working with you on the same project. Now, the problem here is how would you automate that process without having a lot of pain in copying and pasting every single file, matching the directories, uh, paths, and, and, and making sure that, for example, certain services are installed and certain, for example, SQL databases have been instantiated or, uh, or deployed and, and all these stuff. Um, do you, if you are doing this by hand, uh, this will take really a very, 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 very long time. And this is really bad. And, uh, and it's really counterintuitive and really problematic. Uh, and, for example, it could take hours and maybe days to do, for that to happen. Now, what a building system does is, is, is more like a scripting system or like a monitoring system which keeps track of every file you have in your project. And what it does is it will just, once you would like to deploy that project somewhere else, you just simply say, okay, I'm going to make that build for deployment, uh, as a, for development deployment. So, so anybody who is going to use that project, I'm going to build it and I'm going to give that build files of, along with my project files and then whoever is going to be trying to deploy that build in your in their machine they will just simply run a simple command and they will immediately the, the, and they will just sit back in for in, in like say in 10 15 minutes the whole project will be deployed on their machine and they can immediately start working 
right away. So this is a very cool, um, how can I say, a uh, very cool feature uh, for people to utilize uh, if they would like to deploy um, their uh, their project somewhere else. Right? Um, okay, so since we have an idea about the um, project structure, we can actually start working on with the with the classes themselves. Now I'm gonna actually divide, I'm gonna actually make a separate video for intents and activities and what are they? What is the activities uh, life cycle and everything? But we're gonna keep that um, uh, so so we're gonna keep that in a later lesson. So I'm gonna keep this lesson really really flat and really smooth so you can actually like start building out your application and have something running in your emulator. Right. So. Um, before actually I run this, let me show you first uh, some some of the things here in the resources. Uh, a drawable for as you, if you have if you haven't noticed yet, uh, it has you have multiple folders of drawables. You have a drawable HDPI, MDPI, XHDPI, XXHDPI, and um, and all these all these folders are relating to um, different screen sizes of, for for. Uh, I mean, the MD HDPI is for a different screen size. MDPI is a different screen size, and you have uh, and you have an icon for every different screen size. And Android, in fact, automatically, what it will do is once your application runs, it will seek for the resource that's suitable for the current for the device's current screen resolution, and then you will get that um, and you will get that graphics right away running for that specific screen resolution, all right? Now, if I collapse this, now, of course, we're going to be working with the drawables. I'm going to actually make probably another folder called drawable without any uh, prefixes, uh, actually suffixes, uh, because of the, uh, because of the, uh, uh, because it will, because I need it to run on all screen resolutions regardless of, of where it's going to be. So I'm going to actually, we're going to see that in detail later on in the next video. Now, uh, the layout is here. Here's the part where we would like to configure how our layout will look like. Now, we have two ways of configuring our layout. We have this uh, nice GUI uh, configuration here where you can actually start adjusting properties of certain things uh, in your user interface right there. You have, you have all the controls from the palette. You have here, you can here pick up the theme. So if you are working with Currently, this is Nexus 4. If you would like to work with Nexus 5, there you go. You can actually select it out, and you get actual Nexus 5 clone here. So there we go. So this is how it look next. How your application will look inside Nexus 5 skin. I'm actually working with Nexus 4 here. So um, I don't know actually what is the difference between those two, but anyway. And of course, you have Nexus 10, Nexus 7. Um, actually, this is like the Google Play. Uh, editions of the um, of their phones or the Nexus lines, if you say. And here is the other standard screen resolutions that could appear in the market. Now, of course, you can actually add different device definitions and so on. Now, uh, honestly, uh, personally, in fact, I I like to work with uh, XML layout even more because I got the more flexibility and uh, I get much faster writing out what I exactly want. And if you look carefully here, I get my, uh, the phone here is, is displayed beside me. So I could, in fact, change any, everything and anything, and it will be adjusted live. So if I, if I take this as an example, uh, right now this is Hello World, but when I click here, it will show add string. But just bear with me here for a second. I will explain what add string is. But I would say, for example, this is a test. And once I save, you get the change reflecting right there, which is really, really very, very intuitive and very, very productive. So this is really good. Uh, oops, sorry. So this is really good to have um, around. So you have the text. You can manipulate. You can write the commands, and then you can see uh, the changes there right away. And you're going to see me most of the time I'm working in this uh, area. But of course, feel free to work in the designer view. There is no any... Uh, problems or nothing is actually stopping you from doing that. Okay, now if I would like to run the application right now, we have to run it inside an emulator so we can see what's happening. Or, of course, 
if you have your phone with you right now, you can just hook up your phone with the USB uh, cable and then you get your application just debugged and running, up and running. Now, uh, I have actually uh, installed Jenny Motion, and you can get Jenny Motion right from here. So, uh, the fast Android emulator, which is really, really fast. And, of course, you have to sign in. Then you can, once you sign in, you just download um, the Jenny Motion emulator. Uh, actually, you get, you're going to get to download the package with the uh, virtual box, uh, virtual machine. And once you install everything, you will get you once you launch your application, you will get uh, this Jenny Motion application. You will get, be greeted with this uh, window, and of course everything will be blank. You will not see anything here. I downloaded actually two ROMs, which is the uh, actually by ac accidentally I've double clicked on the 4.3, uh, which is Jelly Beans, uh, the latest Jelly. Beans. And it's very very important, guys, that you that you really don't test your application just on the emulator again because because you really never know. I mean, the, the emulator is really, really fast, as you can see here. I mean, maybe you're going to get a, a little bit dropout in the frame rate, but, but uh, because of the recording, but I, I assure you, this, uh, the, the uh, emulator is really buttery smooth, smooth. Now, if you hit the uh, Start button, by the way, if you don't own, uh, if you don't have an Android phone or you haven't uh, owned uh, an, Android, an Android phone before, I advise you to uh, install the emulator. This is actually as close as it gets to an Android phone. So you can just start exploring, see how the phone works and, and, and everything. And, and this is really almost close to experience to, to a real phone. So uh, you will have, uh, uh, however, you're going to have a little bit different applications that don't exist, exist in other phones. For example, the super user, which exists only if you have rooted your phone. Um, the API demos, you, you don't see that on your phone, of course. And when you click here, you'll get all the uh, demos that are ex that exist in the documentation. So, for example, if I hit the animation, if I go here, for example, seeking, and then if I hit run, so this is like, so I could control certain things here. All right. So this is this is like for you know, seeking, tracking here, animation, and everything. And of course, you got you you get you get a lot of these things, um, animation, bouncing ball. So this is really kind of cool. Um, now, of course, you have on all other sections. You have you have many many sections there. You have uh, you have graphics where you can actually start playing with. Uh, cameras, OpenGL, and, and, and many, many, many other things. Now, if you are interested in these demos and seeing their source code, uh, you can go ahead, visit these samples, uh, the part of the samples of the SDK, and you can, of course, start, you know, expanding these and getting out, um, for example, like um, getting all the, um, the explanation of every sample, and uh, if you would like to go ahead and check out the projects themselves, you can go ahead, uh, go to the Android Studios installation, which is going to be located, if you installed it by default, uh, for everyone, not only for the current user, which, are, which is using the current phone, uh, sorry, the current computer, uh, program files, Android, Android Studio, SDK, and then here inside the samples, you get the actual project. Okay? which you can actually import and play with. All right, so let me close that. And since we already know where everything is and we have our Android emulator up and running, I just simply hit the Run button here. Now, ADB is connecting to the emulator right now, trying to actually go for it. The Gradle is trying to build uh, the, uh, the project right now, making a building script for it. So just give it a second here and right now we can choose the device Jenny Motion Nexus 4 which is good and okay and there you go we get the hello world the LMS client and then you get a very interesting kind of debug sorry I'm gonna actually resize this you can see everything just being resized in a scary way but it's okay and this is what is called the logcat now logcat is the logging system uh, the official logging system where you can actually monitor what is happening inside your application. Now, unlike developing Windows application for Windows, for example, where some of the times you were actually starting 
let's say, uh, uh, um, you know, for example, when you are debugging your application, you uh, you start displaying messages, message boxes, and everything just really quick, you know, and everything. Uh, in Android, is not recommended at all. Uh, while developing Windows applications and even web applications, it's always advised that you use something which is called a logging system. Um, Log4Net is quite famous. Log4J is the Java version for it if you are developing using Java. Logcat is the uh, logging system which Android uses. So you can expect, like, uh, see all the debug messages coming out of your phone. What is application currently running? What have you actually had pressed or executed? Have the refresh rate have changed and so on and so forth? Um, and of course, please do not forget Let's see, if you are using a real phone, that uh, you have to go to the, um, mm -hmm. well, okay, the developer settings apparently is not here. So let me see. So let me uh, hit on the build number. So there you go. Okay, it's three steps away, two steps away, one more. And now I'm a developer. And this is what you should do on your phone, by the way. So I'm going to get back. And just give it a minute. And right here I have the developers option. And give it a minute as well. Now I've, I think it's a little bit slow because of the recording and everything, but here you go. I enable USB debugging. Now you have to enable that if you'd like to debug through USB, so it's very, very important. And I'll hit back, back, and that's it. Now if you are, uh, if you are actually, if you have run the application, your application is already installed, and as you can see here, it is the DLMS client. So once you click on it, it runs again. Okay, and we get this default menu which has the setting button, which doesn't do anything, which is okay. Now let me go ahead, minimize this down a little bit. Okay, or maybe even actually because we are really, really running out of space, I'm just going to hide it here. And uh, and let's talk about about the layout here for a sec. Now when, I'm just going to zoom here a little bit like this. Now when we are talking about making an application for, uh, for a mobile phone, we have to be careful about the size of the text, uh, the size of the views right now, which is going to be, this is the controls, actually views are basically the controls like text buttons and text, text boxes buttons and all labels and all these things. And uh, and the distances between them, so it's very very important because because our fingers are a little bit larger than the screen, so it's very very important that you actually get this uh, UI kind of layout right. Now, additionally, we have we need to make a login layout where where we're gonna have like the username and password and a button submit, and maybe for example, if you are having any problems logging in, like report to us a problem or something like that, maybe we're gonna push in or put in a button right there. Now, for the uh, all intents and purposes, we can actually make this UI a little bit more, how can I say, we're going to beautify it. We're going we're gonna to make rounded buttons or maybe rounded text boxes. We're going to see. And we're going to change the colors a little bit. So we make it looking a little bit more professional but rather than giving it this uh, very default kind of old way of, you know, since Android 1.5 kind of look. Okay? Now, if you look here carefully, you get the add strings hello world. Now, why is that? Now, if you expand your values over here, you will get dimensions, strings, styles. Now, styles here, here is actually for the theme, your application theme. So, for example, if you are having your application running under a certain SDK, you're going to apply a certain theme. If you, uh, sorry, under a certain version of Android, you're going to have a certain theme. If the Android phone is running, if your Android application is running on a different Android operating system, older, for example, then you're going to have to modify that theme to follow the phone's or the older operating system style. Now, strings over here is the part where you keep all your strings of your application. So all the labels, all the hints, uh, everything which has a text on your user interface has to be here. Now, Google is actually recommending that you keep this separated, and they made these strings files just specially for that. Okay? 
and they made it just specially for that because right now, let's say you are making an application uh, for, uh, for let's say, okay, right now we are making an application uh, as a DLMS client and we are, let's say, making it in Bosnian. Now, uh, of course, uh, if we had, let's say, starting having international students, right now you need your application to be translated to make it easier for the user to interact with. Now, you're going to need to translate that application, you know. And if you start to translate the application, you have to get the translator sitting beside you as a developer and changing every control. Now, of course, this is tedious and counterintuitive and counterproductive and everything. So, what you're going to have to do here is, if you separate everything into one strings file, you can right now send this file to the translator, and the translator, all what he will do or she will do is translate all these words and 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 or sentences and then you get that file back you just simply integrate it into your system or into your application and say if the localization is let's say English on that phone just please run the English version of the strings file okay so um, here instead of hello world for example I could type in something else so here is the strings is divided by uh, into two pieces the name of the string which you're going to access from code and the value of the string which you which the user going to see or you're going to see in the uh, in the UI layout so right here I'm going to have I could have uh, here uh, like um, Welcome to DLMS, for example. But of course, we will not keep that. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, this is going to be the value. I'm going to call this welcome. And uh, and this is and it's actually a label, so LDL underscore welcome. Okay. I'm keeping here everything low letters, uh, low caps, um, following the standard of how Android developers put the resources names like that. I think. You are not even allowed, maybe. Actually, yeah, you are allowed to have larger ones. Actually, the file names in the resources folder are not allowed to have spaces, capital letters, or numbers in anywhere. So all of these files has to have just only strings or and underscores, nothing more. No dots, uh, no numbers, no capital letters, nothing. Okay, so this is very, very important. Your application just won't compile. You will get errors. Uh, there is an error in the naming of the files. All right, so if you go back again here, you get immediately add string hello world because we are right now referencing to a string value which doesn't exist. So I'll just simply erase that. Now, if you hit control space, once you put this like in between these two uh, double quotes, you have the add string, um, you know, add string kind of uh, resource slash and then here we go, we have the LBL welcome. So you have the autocomplete as well, the IntelliSense is working, as, working for us as well. All right, so if I run this application, and let me get back here. Let me wait for the, oh, actually waiting for the, uh, for the Gradle build. And there we go. Give it a minute, and there we go. So welcome to the OMS. Now, again, please do not think about the, the size of the text is okay on your screen. It is really tiny, okay? If you put this right now on your phone, you're going to see, like, it's really, really, really tiny. So uh, in order to fix this, we're going to have to go to Design, go to um, Metrics and Grids. Uh, right here, we have to follow the Android's metrics, all right? So we have to find how large is the um, is the text here. So for a 400, uh, 48 uh, depend, uh, density independent pixel here has to be. Mm -hmm. So we have here like 16 dp. So this is the medium text. So let me double check here. Uh, actually, let me go back. I have to say Android. I think uh, size maybe or text size there you go and right here I'm gonna put here 16 dp and actually our application I think it's got bigger a, a tad bigger there you go if I return back again you see it just got bigger so if I hit uh, play again 
waiting for my Gradle to execute. So okay. Oops. And then we get it a little bit, little bit larger. Right now, according to the Android's, how am I going to say, um, standard. All right. So let's start having um, having some controls working for us. So right now, I'm, I don't need actually this um, text view. I'm going to actually explain exactly what is wrap content and uh, uh, and on all these uh, layout management later in an, in another video. But but uh, we're going to keep it really simple here. Just try to follow me. And uh, uh, for now, I'm just we're going to get uh, this demo up and running. Um, instead of edit instead of text view, I'm going to have uh, edit text. And edit text is in fact a like some sort of like a like a text box where you can actually start inputting text. So uh, if I hit Control S and run this, and there you go. You can in fact start uh, because I assigned the text uh, property to the text box so that's why I can start typing things and you can see here my my text my text box starts to uh, to expand based on the uh, text which I'm typing now of course for a login screen this is kind of weird and it's even weirder to have a text right right there written for me and I have to erase it now what we need to do is to have a text box like this or the edit text has to be centered right here expanding to the edges, have the password as well under it, and then we have like sign in button there. Okay, so how can we do this? Now, first of all, we would like we could get rid of the um, the labels, and we can put hints in there. I'm going to show what a hint is by just right away typing here hint, and instead of uh, and instead of having the uh, label welcome, and as you can see here, everything is just grayed out. Uh, and I will see how it looks like in a second. Instead of label uh, welcome here, it'll be a welcome. Uh, I will in fact change this. I will go back into the style. Let me just hide this again. Go to style. Uh, looking for styles. Actually, I don't need it. Not even the manifest nor the app. And then I'll go and say this is going to be. It'll be a, actually it's going to be hint underscore login. And here I'm just going to type in login. And I'm going to, in fact, so I'm going to have password as well. And I'm going to have another button. I'm going to have hint, not login, but password, which is going to be password. And for the button text, because the button title has to be different, and just right now it's going to be btn sign in, which is going to be sign in. Sign in. Okay, so I control S to save this and let me get back again. And of course, I lost the reference, and of course, you can see the rendering problem kind of resolve this string. So I'm gonna actually hit control space here and choose choose the hint login. Now, of course, hint login, once we actually run this, give just a minute again. Uh, by the way, I think I think on some machines enabling enabling the virtualization feature in the BIOS will really help. Now, as you can see here, you get a hint what is it about, but it's not a text that you need to erase because it's just it's just something it's something that's grayed out, waiting for you to type something in there. So if I start typing, it just disappears. If I erase everything, it just gets gets back again because it gives you a hint what you should write in there. All right. So let me just hit back and. Uh, and what I'm going to do here, I'm going to have to tell it for the width of, of this control. So this, this edit text, I don't want it to wrap the content. So resize based on the content, but I would like it to uh, match parent. So it will match the parent layout, uh, which is the relative layout, where you can actually start positioning things relative to other things. And we're going to talk about that in detail later. So you're going to see here, you get the login is expanding from this edge to this edge, which is 
perfect the height is wrapping content because I would like to get the height of the text is exactly matching almost or the height of the content is matching the height of the edit text so we won't have this huge kind of uh, how can I say uh, or 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 even less or bigger than the size of the text so we get everything a little bit natural now I could actually copy this and I will um, paste it right here now right now I have two edit text however they are overlapping each other so we need to make them different now what I'm gonna do here first is we have to give these controls a name so I'm gonna get here and say Android ID and by the way it doesn't matter the placement of where this uh, uh, where this uh, where these properties are as you can see I'm just typing there randomly it, it doesn't matter of course it's a good idea to organize the placement so it will be easier for you as a developer to seek out for variables but anyway I mean I personally prefer to put it here now here I'm gonna add add plus ID because here you are adding to your resources folder or resources files you are adding a view so here I'm gonna add I'm going to call this txt login. Right now I've successfully added a new name to the uh, to the control. And let me uh, in fact just keep this nice and neat and just keep it there. All right, and here I'm going to give this one android id equals to plus id txt and I'm going to put here password. Opa txt password and um, and yeah instead of the hint of login I'm gonna give it the hint of password right now you can see how they are overlapping now how can we tell one edit text has to be under the other in order to do that what I'm gonna do here is say Android layout um, for now I have to center it so center in parent is equal to true and right now my password is actually at the center but I would like as well to make this one in the center is it so layout center in parent is as well true now we didn't we didn't escape the problem yet we still have the same problem now what we could do here as well is saying that for the password Android layout underscore below actually not below uh, let me see here I think it's be layout below and layout below and right now I can say I am below whom and here I could pass in I'm below txt login and as you can see here when I said I'm below txt login right now the password just simply jumped up from being overlapping with login and just jumped down to the password uh, actually jump down to be under the login so the password became under the login all right okay um, now we need to add one more control we need to add a button now of course by the way you can see here that the distance is not okay we're gonna actually manage that later in the next video um, right here I'm gonna have the um, button and uh, by the way I just put the bracket here and I hit you know I didn't hit able with anything just it just it immediately appeared for me all the controls which I would like to have and if I hit enter it immediately asks for me well, what is going to be the width and I'm in fact seeking for matching the parent I would like to make it extend uh, under the text box all the way to the side so I'm going to call this match parent now how much how much for the height I'll just simply say wrap the content so put the height of the button as high as the content gets if the font of the button or the text bot or the text on the button gets larger the button will get larger automatically now what we need to do here of course we need to add an ID for it we need to name it because we need first of all to address it when we click on it to so we can access it from the uh, from our um, code behind in the Java side of the world and also we need to know how to access it uh, from within the XML file so we could um, actually push this under the password and I'm gonna call this btn sign in okay now since we have that we need to put for it a text so Android text 
And uh, by the way, you are under the button. Certain properties are going to be enabled for you, and some other properties are not going to be enabled for you, or going to be disabled for you. So don't think that all the properties are all open, are all opened. This uh, this intelligence is really context sensitive. So here I'm going to have the text is going to be at string btn sign in. Now we get the sign in text written on the button. Cool. Now what we need to do here again is to center it. So I say Android layout uh, uh, layout underscore center in parent. Now if I leave that like that with true, we're gonna end up with the sign in being centered along with the actual text. So I'm gonna say here Android layout underscore below. And there I'm going to mention that I'm going to be under the uh, password. And now once I'm under the password, I get my layout has been organized that way. And if I would like to test this, I'll just simply run this so we can see how um, the things look like here. Now as you can see here, we are greeted with our um, activity here and we have the login, we have the password, now of course this is not okay and then you have the sign in button which doesn't do anything for now. So let me hit the uh, back button here and uh, let me see if we'd like to make this as a password we say Android password is true and if we run this and wait for it now if we type in actually it doesn't do anything did i oh i actually added it for the login not the so login right now becomes the password uh let me actually exchange that uh so uh, i'm gonna grab this control x i'm gonna move this right uh right there so if I run this application again, we have the login, which is going to be login, and we have password, which is in fact a password, so it behaves like a real password. I mean, password input field. Now in the in the next lesson, we're going to be. I mean, uh, it's really it has been a, bit, a little bit longer, kind of 50 minutes right now. We are hitting the 50 minutes mark. Uh, it's gonna. It was a little bit longer lesson because we uh, because we really had to introduce a lot of stuff here. I mean, we had to familiarize ourselves with all of stuff here. Uh, but uh, in the next lesson, we're going to be starting um, styling our activity. Uh, adding colors, uh, making uh, making our buttons and uh, uh, and text boxes or edit texts looks look different. We're gonna explore more about the layout and see how we're gonna manage them pro correctly. Uh, we're gonna get the metrics as well correct and all these stuff. So we're gonna all edit all that. Uh, maybe we if we have time we immediately go ahead and open even uh, go ahead into the home activity where we're gonna have our home screen where we'll get all the announcements uh, displayed for the students. All right.